Welcome to 13 News Now. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for 13 News Now. I'm Jennifer Abney in for Erin Noon tonight. She has the evening off and we come to you live every weeknight at 9 p.m. right here from the digital desk at our WWK TV Charleston studios right here in West Virginia. Here's a look at some of the stories that we're covering today. A new initiative is making it easier for West Virginia, to West Virginians rather, who benefit from the state's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP as it's known to get more bang for their buck. And it's been proven to be popular so far. In fact, crucial as well in the Mountain State. And that has coordinators saying they just need more funding to ensure that it continues throughout the rest of the year. 13 News reporter Lily Bradley explains. Access to fresh fruits and vegetables has never been easier in Kanawha County. And thanks to an initiative from the West Virginia Food and Farm Coalition, it's now available to everyone, regardless of income. So this is very accessible for folks who, um, in general, may not have all the access to fresh food that they need, but then especially in a time like COVID, this is, we have seen this program explode. Spend a dollar, get a dollar. That's the basic idea behind the SNAP stretch program. Currently, it's funded through grants and donations. We walked into this year with $150,000, and, and then COVID hit. And we've already almost completely um, given out all of that money. Right now, funding for the program is limited, so there's just a few locations, including Capital Market, that can still participate. But they're hoping to change that with a new proposal sent to Governor Jim Justice. We need this program to continue, and we really need, we need help. We've, we've um, requested um, funding from the CARES Act, from Governor Jim Justice's office. We're also looking at other private um, donations from folks um, who want to support this program and see it continue for the rest of 2020. The CARES Act money is possible because there's still $1.2 billion in federal assistance to the state that Governor Jim Justice has yet to allocate, which is so important, not only for those using their SNAP benefits, but also for local farmers and businesses participating. This drives the economic development for the farmers and provides the nutrition and an additional way of safety for our customers that are out here at these markets where there's fewer hands in the food supply touching their food and products that they're providing those local citizens. In Kanawha County, I'm Lily Bradley, 13 News, working for you. Meanwhile, those shopping with kids or shoppers who are over 60 are eligible for extra match money. And we've included a complete list of all the current participation locate locations right here on our website. And we'll continue to keep you updated on the additional request for funding. Meanwhile, the uncertainty about starting public schools was discussed during Governor Jim Justice's pandemic update today. He says September 8th is still the target date, but that could be pushed back if necessary. Now, then the briefing did have a different turn, just discussing COVID-19, to a political sparring match with Senator Joe Manchin and a news conference of his own just before Justice's, Man just before Justice's news conference. Manchin questioned why the governor had released so little of the Federal CARES Act money that was sent to West Virginia to help cities and counties in the Mountain State. But the governor is using this as a political slush fund. He's in an election year and using this as a political sus fund. You tell me why he's only, and this has come from the auditor's office, there's only been $44 million that's gone to cities and counties. It's a lie. It's a lie. What Senator Manchin ought to do is concentrate on the job that he has in D.C. and get that job done and get that job done properly. He ought not concentrate so much on, on, on trying to run Ben Salango's campaign. Of course, Ben Salango is Governor Justice's Democratic challenger in the November election. Today, he also weighed in saying, quote, Jim Justice is using taxpayer funded news conferences to attack me. Well, the Cabell County Board of Education is putting a new bond measure on the ballot in the upcoming special election. But because of the pandemic, they've had to think outside of the box when it comes to getting community input. 13 News reporter Natalie Wattis showing you their approach. When we first started this, uh, this uh, CEFP process a year ago, we had no idea there would be a COVID-19 pandemic, you know. And, uh, and so we even considered stopping the process. The process Flowers is talking about is the multitude of meetings and community discussions that need to happen before a school bond levy can be put on a ballot. 
The question is, how do you get public input when people can't participate in the discussion in person? At first, they thought about simply delaying the levy to another time. But we started talking to the community leaders and they were all like, no, you've got to do this. We need this economic stimulus right now. So, like nearly everything else this year, the community meetings went virtual. And it's been pretty amazing because, you know, we usually have between 40 and 60 people attend those public meetings. Sometimes we wouldn't have that many people attend in, in our real life meetings. The bond will be on the ballot August 22nd. If passed, it would mean a revenue boost of $87 million. Flowers says this bond money, if passed, will go towards rebuilding and renovations, among other things that the community deemed most needed. Like the lack of central air conditioning, lack of sprinkler systems, as well as safety and accessibility issues for disabled students. So the virtual dialogue seems to be working. We've had questions, of course, you know, what are you going to do here? What location are you thinking about? And, and really those things are still kind of up in the air until the bond passes. Reporting in Huntington, I'm Natalie Wattis. 13 News, working for you. And there are two more virtual meetings on the proposal coming up next week. The first is Monday, the second is Thursday, and you can find all the details on how you can take part. Just click on the link to this story right here on our website, WWKTV.com. Well, the federal government has filed to respond to the first two of five lawsuits involving the deaths of veterans at the VA Medical Center in Clarksburg. Those two cases involve, of course, veterans who died back in April of 2018, both according to the lawsuits at the hands of Rita Mays, who pleaded guilty in July to seven counts of murder at the medical center. Now, in both cases, the government offering 18 defenses. They include stating that the government isn't liable for Mays' criminal conduct. Others named in the suit were negligent, not the VA, and that the plaintiff's claims have not exhausted remedies under the Federal Tort Claims Act. Charleston police are currently looking for a woman in connection with a deadly shooting that happened last year. 33 year old Samantha Slater, also known as Samantha O'Brien, is wanted for murder, first degree robbery and first degree sexual assault charges in connection with the death of 41 year old Adam Swim. Police say that Swim was found dead with a gunshot wound to his head inside of his home near Ash Street and Pennsylvania Avenue in mid June of last year. Two lawsuits have been filed in federal court now regarding the Gallia County Jail. Corrections officer Deborah Smith's complaint says she remains traumatized after she and another female officer were overpowered by four men who escaped in September of last year. The other suit filed by the ex-wife of a man who died in the jail in December of 2018 claims that deputies and corrections officers ignored Mark Sims' medical condition and they refused to allow him to be taken to a hospital despite a recommendation from emergency medical technicians two days before he died. From your local election headquarters now, Kentucky Republican Secretary of State Michael Adams wants to open more polling places and also count ballots faster in the November election. Adams says she hopes to make recommendations to Democratic Governor Andy Bashir in early August for holding that election during the pandemic. Adams has indicated that it would be difficult to offer absentee balloting similar to last month's primary that would actually put him at odds with Bashir, who supports no excuse absentee balloting for November. The Kanawha County Commission wants to use the same absentee ballot system in the general election that was actually used in the primary here, despite the fact that Secretary of State has already said that will not happen. Monday, Mac Warner said county clerks will not send applications for absentee ballots by mail to registered voters. But the commission hopes to do just that. Commission President Ken Carper saying, quote, I believe everyone should be allowed to vote at the polls if they choose to do so. But I believe just as strongly that every citizen should be allowed to vote safely from home. About half the ballots cast in the June primary were mail-in absentee ballots. Four months after its commissioning, the USS Herschel Woody Williams has departed for its first deployment. She left Norfolk on Monday, the ship of course named for Medal of Honor recipient and West Virginia native Herschel Woody Williams, who showed heroism during the Battle of Iwo Jima and World War II. According to the Navy, the 784 foot long support ship is now bound for Africa. Well, we want to head and give you a quick look right now at what you can find our top trending stories right here on our website at this hour. Take a look. Operation Predator bust eight men for, for child sex trafficking. 
We will have much more on this coming up on 13 News at 11. Plus, stimulus checks updates. Many Americans would get more in a second payment. And the SNAP stretch program, as we told you earlier, proved successful and is now seeking additional care funding. We have so much more on our website just waiting on you at WOWKTV.com. It was another hot day out there, but I have a feeling showers may be back in the near forecast. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Spencer Atkins. When can we expect that and when do we need our umbrella, Spencer? Yeah, Jennifer, tomorrow really in the afternoon is when the next big round of rain is going to roll in. That's a live picture coming to you now in Huntington. Certainly a nice, nice evening, but friends, it is really, really warm out. Let's check out those temperatures real quickly. There you go. Still 80 right now at 9 o'clock in Charleston, 79 Huntington. We have 81 Louisa, 82 Inez, and 82 in Williamson. Let's get kind of oriented to what is happening around here. And as far as looking at the big weather map, you have some high pressure that kept things a little on the drier side. But if you look over here uh, beneath me here in the box, you can see a lot of rain over toward the St. Louis area. That's coming our direction. That'll be here, especially tomorrow and in particular in the afternoon. In the meantime, the Viper real time radar is quiet here locally. You see a little cell out to the west. Let's watch what happens on predictor tonight, which is not much. The showers begin to enter the picture here, even as early as lunchtime from Ashland out to the west and then these spread to the east. A couple good thunderstorms again should be seen coming across Kentucky, Ohio and West Virginia throughout the afternoon. A secondary surge of rain comes through. That could be plenty. This would be late Thursday night and early on Friday. This is a brand new look at things. So again, you're getting the first look at the new run of predictor even before our friends at 11 o'clock here tonight. Now moving ahead into Friday afternoon, a few scattered storms are still here. So it looks like there are two distinct uh, surges of rain that come through Thursday, Thursday late and early Friday, somewhere in those two time frames. As long as we have a good 12 hours between them, we should be able to handle the water issues. But if you'll note, you can see two inches plus in terms of rainfall, and that's pretty much from Huntington out to the west and to the south. Now we need to keep an eye on that, and that stuff can all change too uh, in short order. So we'll keep an eye on all of that for you. Every one of these lines is a weather model. Every one of those will be at least a tropical storm and then turning into just a big rainmaker uh, by the weekend coming up from Florida. Somewhere across Florida, we don't know. We don't exactly know, which is why you see such a wide variation. But if it hits that warm water out off of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, might intensify more, could throw more rain back in our direction. The latest trend is a little bit out to the east. I'd love to see that trend continue to just continue to take that storm out to sea and not be a problem for anyone. 69 degrees again for tonight. See a nice night. Look at that beautiful sky in Charleston. Highs tomorrow, 87 Huntington, Charleston, 89 Winfield, 85 Williamson with rain afternoon. And in Ohio, we'll still make it into the 80s despite the rain getting in. Uh, let's say before noon around the tri-state. Or let's actually just say Ashland, Ironton, Portsmouth, probably getting that rain before noon. Green up 85, 82 in Paintsville, 84 in Prestonsburg. Now the seven day outlook continues with the chances for showers across the board until we reach, let's say, uh, late Tuesday into Wednesday, and then the chances get small and all of your highs will be in the 80s. Now we'll continue to update things on WOWKTV.com. And of course, we'll see you back at 11 o'clock with the very latest weather models. But again, at 9 o'clock, you get a little sneak peek. All right, Spencer, thanks so much. And of course, thank you so much for joining us for 13 News Now. And as Spencer mentioned, hope you will join us back at 11 o'clock on WOWK for the very latest as well. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.